So Heavenly Father, thank you for your word that we're about to go into this morning. We pray for insight. We pray for revelation knowledge of the word. We pray, O oh God, for a manifestation of the truth. The Bible says we would know the truth and the truth will make us free. Lord, I decree and I declare that truth will be revealed to us and truth will make us free this Amen. morning in Jesus' name. I also pray that the devil will not steal truth from us. In the name of Jesus, you will establish us in truth, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is awesome. God is faithful. God is beautiful. God is excellent. God is ever reigning. God is everlasting. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's good to see you. To see you good. Praise the Lord. So today's topic is lip service. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope you haven't given God lip service. In our praise that has just been concluded. Uh, what did they say? Have you given God lip service? Anybody Has anyone given God lip service? Or heart service? Okay. They didn't come to church this morning. Those people that have a tendency of giving God lip service. You know, so today's topic is lip service. And we're going to be reading Matthew 15, 7 to 9. Matthew 15, 7 to 9. And it says, ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. And that's Matthew 15, 7 to 9. Matthew 15, 7 to 9. It says, the people draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far away. It says, you praise me with your lips. It says, such worship is done in vain. May our worship never be done in vain, in Jesus' name. It says their hearts are far away. Now, let me ask a question. Have you ever had a, a you know, maybe a heart-to-heart -heart conversation? You're pouring out your heart to somebody only to discover that they are miles away. Has, has anyone ever done that? You're, you know, you're really having a deep, is it just me? You're having a deep conversation with them, and in fact, the next thing they did was yawn. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Terrible. That you have just, you know, wasted your words. You've just wasted the words. Now, imagine that. The same way we feel when I'm talking to somebody and they're clearly not interested in what I'm saying. Do you understand? The same way also when we go to God and we're saying words. Or God is speaking to us and where our heart is not in it. And we're saying words and it's not coming from our heart. And we're not concentrating and we're not into it. You know, nobody likes to have a conversation with somebody whose heart is far away. You know, um, someone said, uh, uh, someone is an ardent fan of um, football and their club is playing. And you ask them any question. The answer they give you at that time may not be the correct one. Because they just want you out of their face. We, we can't do that with God either. He says, when you praise me, let your heart be connected with what you're doing. What is wrong with lip service? Why is lip service such a bad thing? Why is it that when what we are saying does not connect with our lifestyle or connect with what is going on in our heart, why is it such a bad, bad thing? So I went to the dictionary and I looked up the meaning of the word lip service. So it's actually a word in the dictionary. It says support for someone or something that is expressed by someone in words, but that is not shown in that person's actions. Yeah? Support for someone or something that is expressed in words by someone, but is not shown in their actions. 
So if I say, I respect you, I respect you, but I don't actually do the things that suggest I respect you. Do you understand? I say I respect, so my words don't mean anything. It is my actions that mean something. So God isn't so much just interested in our words. He's interested in the actions that follow those words because that is what proves the legitimacy of those words that we have spoken. Does that make sense? So when we are offering praise to God, God says, "Mm -mm, I don't just want what your lips are muttering. You know, of course, nobody's going to stand in front of the church when it's time for praise. I'll say, God, I don't like you. God, I'm really angry with you. People are not going to do that. Do you understand? Even though inside of them, they may be feeling that way. And God says, no, don't just pay me lip service. Let it come from a genuine heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Someone said, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Actions are determined by what's in our heart. What a man is going to do is an overflow of what's inside his heart. And then the question I have is, do your actions align with the words that you are speaking? So when I say praise God, am I really praising God in my heart? Is my action really suggesting that I'm praising God? The scripture that we've just read is a reminder that prayer and praise have to come out of a heart. A heart that is tuned in tune with God. That is the kind of prayer and praise God accepts. And that's why sometimes we wonder, we, God says pray and then we'll have. But sometimes we pray and we don't have. And we wonder, why is it that I've been praying and I don't have? We need to ask ourselves, is my heart tuned with God? Do you understand? This prayer, is it, where is it coming from? This praise, where is it coming from? It's very, very important. Otherwise, the prayer and the praise will become invalid if that heart is not tuned with God. So who was Jesus speaking to in this text? He was referring to the religious Jewish leaders of his days, and he called them hypocrites because what their lips were saying was a clear contradiction to their actions, which was a reflection of what was inside their heart. So the true state of their heart was reflected not by what they were saying, but by what they were doing. You know, the Bible said they would, they would instruct people to do so many things, but they themselves won't even lift a finger. They will instruct people, maybe pray fast, but they themselves won't even do any of those things. The Bible calls them hypocrites. And if you look at the definition of hypocrite, hypocrite is actor. Someone is acting. You know, I pray that all that we do before God will not be seen as mere acting. Amen. 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 And it's a good place to say a big amen. Amen. That will be genuine. Because when you see actors, you don't take them seriously. You know, Uh, when you're watching a film and somebody dies, do you you cry crazily? Ah, in the film they have died. No, because you know it's a movie. You know that they're acting. You will see them in another movie when they're alive. (laughs) Or... Or some of the movies that they do now, the person will come back alive in the next series and then they will concoct a story as to how the person didn't really die. Do you understand? So they are actors. So you don't believe anything they are acting. You don't, you don't go uh, and say you, you want to take a, a morning leave because uh, James Bond died in season one. Because you know that in season two he's going to come back to life again. Eh? So they are actors and maybe not be seen as actors Amen. in what we do. In Jesus' name. So even though Jesus was referring to the Jewish leaders of his time, it's also applicable to us that we are not guilty of the same offense that they were guilty of. And so Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And ye seek me, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with all your heart, not with just your lips. When you search for me with all your heart, you will find me. That's what the Bible says. Ezekiel 33, verse 31. Ezekiel 33, verse 31. He says, And they come unto thee as the people come it, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after, much, after their covetousness. So with their heart they are professing love, but they are actually doing something else. They're actually really pursuing something else. So it is one thing to say, uh, 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 it is one thing to what we say, it is another thing what is inside our heart. 
And when God is going to measure us, he's not going to measure us by what we are saying. He's going to measure us by what's in our heart. Because he knows that what is in our heart is what is going to determine our actions. Do you see how it works? So it is not so much what we say. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So with the mouth, the people expressed much love to God, but their hearts were somewhere else. If somehow we human beings can detect when someone is fake, how much more God? You know, when somebody is fake and they're professing fake love, you know, um, ladies, you know, in those days when the guy is chasing, you know, they're chasing, you know the guy is only chasing you for X, Y, Z. You know the guy does not love you. You know all this uh, Totoronto that he's saying. He's only saying it because he wants your hand. But the minute he has your hand or has whatever it was that he's looking after, then this real self shows. Why do you know that? Because he's professed the same love to so many people. In fact, the letter he wrote, he sent to you, your name is uh, Ruth, but he had Janet on it. Because uh, Janet is one of the, <laughs> the ladies, and he made a mistake, you know. Uh -huh. you know rem I remember one man of God was sharing with us that he has so many girls, you know. So each girl had a birthday, you know. He gave them different birthdays so that they would not coincide in his house at the same time. So for Janet, he was born in January. For Ruth, he was born in February. So he would give them different dates. But God help him on the day that all of them congregate on the same day. Yeah. Now, can you consider a, a, a love from a man like that, a journey love? A man who has distributed the love between one million ladies. And God wants us to be genuine and sincere as well when we profess our love to him. You know, if you, if you were one of those ladies and you found out, how would you feel? You would feel terrible, wouldn't you? Now imagine the same with God. If we're professing love to him with our mouth, but he can see in our heart that our love is actually with somebody else. Imagine how God feels. That's the same way we feel when we feel that we have been jilted or we have been cheated. And um, Praise God. So let's be genuine. Let's be genuine when we profess those words. He's interested in what is going on in our hearts. Let's read also Psalm, I'm sorry, Proverbs. Proverbs 23, 6 to 8. Proverbs 23, 6 to 8. And I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. And it says, don't eat with people who are stingy. Don't desire their delicacies. They are always thinking about how much it costs. Eat and drink, they say, but they don't mean it. You will throw up what little you've eaten, and your compliments will be wasted. Yeah? They say, come and eat, come and drink. But you say they don't mean it. So the same thing with God. You say, I worship you, come Lord Jesus. And it's coming close. <coughs> Can you imagine? So everybody look at me. We say, come Lord Jesus. Everybody watch me. We say, come Lord Jesus. So Jesus is there. Come Lord, and it's coming. Come Lord Jesus. And it's, so that means I'm not even looking in his direction. And it's coming. He's even approaching me. He's even touching me. But my eyes are somewhere else. And he will say, ah, did you not call me? Why did you bother to call me if you don't really, really want my attention? Do you understand? So let's be genuine. Just be genuine when we, in all our expressions to him. Amen. So if we say, come Lord Jesus, be expecting him to come. Huh? Someone says, ah, you can come and visit me. Yeah, 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 I'm expecting you. And they come to your house, you don't have water to offer them. You don't even have it, even ordinary water to offer them. That means you were not really expecting them. Because if you were expecting them, you would have prepared for them. Yeah? So God doesn't want just lip service. He wants us to prepare for him. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to cite some scenarios. Um, I'm going to cite some scenarios using some of the known songs that we, we sing. You know, and I'm going to be asking some questions. So when we sing the song, I surrender all to you. Sing along. Everything. I give to you everything, everything I give to you. Let's stop the song there. The question is, have you surrendered all? Don't answer. Answer inside yourself. Have you genuinely surrendered all? You know, last year we say I surrender all. Two years ago, 
We say I surrender all. But you still haven't surrendered. You know that that time is not really in God's hands. It's your time. You know that money. Ah, God, I have surrendered everything. You know. I surrendered my heart. But you see that money. Ah, it's still in my hand. When we come to God and we sing a song like that, the angels will just be laughing. I say, really? This one? Singing I surrender all? Wow. Wow. Have we really surrendered all? Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's how what we say no longer is lip service and is genuine. If we're not doing what Romans 12, 1 tells us, total surrender is what God is asking for. And that's my appeal to us today. Total surrender. 1 Corinthians 4, 7. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 says, For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou received it, why dost thou glory as though thou has not received it. There's nothing we have that we haven't received. So it shouldn't be too difficult to give it back to the one who gave it to us in the first place. So that's the first song. Let's carry on in that song. It says, We'd hold in nothing. We'd hold in nothing. Sing along. We'd hold in nothing. With all in nothing, I give you all of me. 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 Is it true that you have withheld nothing? Is it true? that there isn't anything that you have withholden from God. And I think a message like this is a message of reflection. Because we sing these songs, and there's nothing wrong with singing this song. We just need to go a step further and make sure we really mean it. When, God, when we stand before God, can we actually say, God, I am withholding nothing? Can we say that? I am withholding nothing. Can we say that I give you all of me? You really? God will say, okay, let me, I'm asking for that one. And say, hey, God, but I give you, but not that one. God is asking. So when we sing that song, let's be, let's go back. Or maybe not go back, maybe go a step further and begin to put things in place so that that song will be true and not a lie. Another song that we always sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. How determined are we not to go back? Yeah? How determined? And what measures have we put in place to ensure that we don't go back? Because if you don't put measures in place to ensure that you don't go back, you will go back. Yeah? So I was reading a book, um, and the lady was talking about how God called her to ministry. And then she said, um, she used to be into sales, and God called her into ministry. And then she went to her manager and said to him, you know, please release me. Anyway, the guy released her. And then she said to God, oh, yes, okay, Lord, what next? I have obeyed you. And God said, no, you haven't completed, completely obeyed me because there's still a breach. You still have your certificates. You still have the accolades you have acquired as an expertise, as an expert salesperson. He said, get rid of all those ones. And then I know that you are relying on me. It took her, in fact, she said she could get rid of so many things, but there were some that she really struggled to get rid of. 
But until she got rid of that, that was when God now said to her, now you are serious and you want to follow me. Remember the scripture about Elisha? The Bible said the yoke of oxen, you know, all the equipment, all the things in that business, he gave it away. Yeah? So that it is not possible for him to go back. So you say, I have, I have decided to follow Jesus. But in your house, you still have the whiskey. You know, I go to some, some Christian house. You see the bottle of vodka, bottle of whiskey. What on earth is that bottle still doing there? I, I'm not drinking it, but I just don't want... No, because the day is going to come where you will turn back and go back to that whiskey. You still have packets of cigarettes. You say, I don't smoke again, eh, but I may give it to my friend. No, you haven't burnt the bridges. You need to burn it. Or maybe in those days where you were still in the, you know, in the dark world and you still believe in all these superstitions, you know, some of the things you bought when you went to India or you went to France, you know, some of those things, and you know that they are not, you know, they are not Christian, but you keep it because it was a friend that gave it to you or it cost you so much money. God, they say, go and, be, go and burn those things. Because that is how God really knows that you have decided not to go back. As long as you still have access to those things, you, are going, you, you haven't burnt the bridge. You can go back anytime. And so it's important when we say we have burnt those, we have decided to follow Jesus, no going back. Put measures in place. Your friends, are they still the clubbing friends? You said my best friend, but it's a clubbing one. You need to have another best friend. So that that one is just a, a casual friend. Your best friend is still a clubbing type. You need to burn that bridge. Because one day, that best friend will drag you to that place. I, I, am I making sense? Yes. Yeah? So let's be real. Let it not just be lip service. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm not speaking on some of, those, some of the songs we do, because I know we know them very well. Um, okay, so another song. I give myself away. Sing along with me. I give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself away. I want to hear you loud and clear. I can't hear you. I give myself away. So you can use me. When was the last time? You allowed God to use you. Yeah? When was the last time you allowed God to use you? You see a beggar man coming and you know that he's going to beg for money. So what do you do? You quickly cross the road to the other side. You say, I don't have their time. You see someone in need. Or maybe you even see a need in the house of God. When was the last time you volunteered to do anything in the house of God? Even without being told to do so. Or even when you're told to do something, you are the type that's always giving excuses. I can't, I can't, I can't. And to be honest with you, a lot of the I can't is I won't. We call it I can't, but really when you check it, it's I won't. Because the capacity to can, to do it, is there. So let's be genuine in our words and expressions to God. I give myself away, not so I can sit on the chair and do nothing. So if you're in the house of God hmm, and you are not doing anything today, let today be the last day. Pick up something because you said, I give myself away so you can use me. What is the kingdom of God profiting from your life? Who is eating from your tree? Yeah? I was looking at the... I was looking at the tree. I have a tree in my garden. And I was looking at it yesterday. I said, this tree is just... Every winter, you will just see the leaves plumbing and... Blah, 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 blah. The whole garden is full of leaves. I mean, I, and it's really annoying, all those leaves. And I was saying to myself, ah, maybe one day I'm going to call these tree people to uproot it. And then I said, no, Nola. That tree eh, is giving shelter to some birds. Because in summertime... You will see loads of bread on it. There will be, you know, and it has, I don't know what they eat on it, but they will come. They seem to find something to eat on that tree. Not that I am eating anything from it. So, so, so even that can be a blessing to somebody. So who is eating from your tree? 
Do you understand me? Because when we get to heaven, God will say, ah, you sang this song, oh, I gave myself away so you can use me. He said, two years ago you sang it. I am still not using you. One year ago, in fact, today you still sang it. I'm not, so please, find something to do. Even if all you do in church is pack chairs. Even if all you do in church is welcome somebody. Even if all you do in church is, ah, okay, when it's time, I will serve tea and coffee. Even if all you do in church is welcome the new people, make sure they are comfortable. Even if all you do is, ah, pastor, all the new people, can I join follow-up team? Can I begin to make phone calls to them, check on them, make sure they're fine? For, for instance, today, there are some people that are not in church. Ah, pastor, do you mind if I just phone them, check on them, make sure, you, do you understand? There's always something to do in the house of God. There's a lot of work. So if you're singing this song, so you can use me, and God is waiting, I'll be waiting, no? I want to use you, but you need to make yourself available for God to use you. Am I making sense this morning? Yes. Yeah? All right. Okay, so let's go to another song. Every praise is to our God. Sing along. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. One more time. Da, 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 da. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship it one icon. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Are we secretly giving praise to something else or someone else? You know, sometimes some people, when people, some people come out and share testimonies, I wonder who the glory is actually going to. Is the every praise going to God? Because the truth of the matter is that God knows who you are really praising. Is it the man of God or the woman of God or the God of the, the woman or the God of the man that you are praising? Does, am I making sense? Because sometimes when we share our testimonies, we put honor in the place where honor... And I'm not saying don't appreciate men of, and women of God. But you know, there's a way you say it that, in fact, in the eyes of God, it would seem like it was a man of God, woman of God that did it. Or the bank that did it. Or the auntie or the uncle that did it. Yes, God is going to use individuals. But please remember, if God did not put it in their hand, heart to do it, if God did not give them the resources to do it, they still won't be able to do it. Amen. If they may have the resources, it may not be in their heart. They won't do it. It may be in their heart, they may not have the resources. They won't do it. So at the end of the day, who is the glory due to? It's due to God. To a man, yes. you will say thank you. So Juliet blesses me. Thank you, Juliet. Ah, I praise God for your life. I thank God for blessing you and making me a blessing. Making you a blessing to me. Do you see what I've just done? So I have said, of course, it would be impolite for someone to give you something and say, hey, give God the glory. I mean, I, some people will, will bless me. And I will say thank you. They will say, mm -mm -mm. I say, no, no, no. I still have to thank you because you've done something. But I will now still give all the glory back to God for enabling you to be a blessing in my life. Does that make sense? Yes. So that when we are singing this song, every praise is to our God. Let's mean it. Let's not give praise to something or someone or to ourselves. Ah, I really studied hard. Ah, I studied hard. Uh. There are many people who study. How many of us have been students before? How many people you know you studied hard and you hardly remembered anything? But you studied hard, but hardly remembered anything. Am I lying? Uh, I've shared with you before. I went into an exam hall. I could not spell which. W-H-I-C-H. I could not spell it. I wrote down which. W I S H. And in fact, I even wrote down which. W I T. -I 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 and you just know that it's not correct. You know what I had to do eventually? I crossed the whole sentence out and then wrote another sentence that did not require the use of the word which. That is not even just a word. Not even the, not even the science, not even the technology. Not, can you imagine? So when you go to exams and you read and you pass, please do not give the, end, the, the glory to your brain. Give it to the God who has still ensured your brain is functioning. Amen. Yeah. 
And thank God that your script did not go missing. That's another one. And thank God that the examiner woke up on the right side of the bed on the day he was marking your script. I do think parents pray for your children. Because if the teacher or the examiner wakes up on the wrong side of the bed, maybe a slight mistake that they make that he could just overlook. You know, there's some errors and you know that this person knows, but you know, but if he woke up, maybe he fought with his wife or husband that morning. Say, what nonsense is this? Bang, 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 bang. Cross the whole thing. You th- you, it happens. If you know teachers, ask them. They will tell you that some days they're just angry with every student, with every report, with everybody. What, what nonsense? Is this what I taught you? I used to have a lecturer who was fixated by the spelling of separated. Because we all used to write separated as S-E-P-E. She used to get really angry. She, would, she can almost fail you. Because separated is... S-E-P-A. Uh, correct? That is how I remember the spelling to tomorrow because the number of times I have written S-E-P-E and she would just be very angry. So it is not because of your academic progress that you pass that exam. It is part of it. But there are more factors to it. So every praise, everybody say every praise is to our God. So when you sing that song, don't do lip service. Let really mean it that this praise belongs to God. Amen? Amen. Wow. Okay. Another song that we often sing. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. And then we get to a point in the song. I'm desperate for you. I'm lost without you. I'm desperate for you. And I, I'm desperate for you. Is it true? When you're desperate for something, what do you do? Eh? When you're desperate, I was watching a movie, <laughs> uh, one of these um, husband and wife series, and this guy was calling his fiance. But of course, his fiance was on a phone call to another guy who's trying to woo her. And this guy called and called and called and called. In fact, he would call, would call the phone, he would call. Why? Why was he calling? He was desperate. He was desperate to speak to his woman. And somebody else is engaging in conversation. How desperate are we for God? Are we really desperate for God? We sing the song, but how desperate are we? A part of the song says, this is the air we breathe. Do we see God as the air we breathe? In other words, you know that without air, you will not survive. Do you really treat God as air that you need? And without the air, you know you cannot survive. One of the things that COVID came to do was to take air from many people. Many people couldn't breathe. I experienced COVID once. If I even happened during Bible study, I don't know if you guys remember, I couldn't breathe. I could, it was only the day after that I realized I had COVID. I'm like, ah. so is this what happens to COVID people? I could not breathe, you know? And normally when I, when, I, um, when I have a cold and I apply, because everybody teases me in my house that, Mrs. Rob, when I apply Rob, anything that is wrong with me, I'll just bring out my Rob and apply the Rob. So everybody knows me and Rob. I applied Rob. Instead of making my nostrils clear, it was blocking it. That's how I know how important breathing is. I was hyperventilating. I had to do um, um, steam inhalation until the thing subsided. And it was only the following day that I realized I had COVID. I'm like, wow. So this is how it takes them. So do we treat God like that air that we breathe? And we know that without the air, you're gone. If the air, if after a while air does not go into the brain, into the lung, everything begins to pack up. Do how desperate are we, God? Are we really desperate? Do we value Him like the air that we breathe? And then one final song that we all sing, and we sing it in our church too. Um, I am a friend of God. Everybody sing. I am a friend of God. 
I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Some of you are scared to sing it now. Come on, sing it. I know you know it. Come on. I am a friend of God. Oh, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. And of course, I'm sure you know the answer I'm going to ask. Are you truly a friend of God? The man that was called a friend of God in the Bible is Abraham. Was Abraham. The Bible said because he believed, God counted it for him as righteousness. And therefore he was called a friend of God. So, I am a friend of God. I can call, I can say, ah, Sister Jasmine is my friend. She's my friend. But does Sister Jasmine see me as her friend? You know that there are two different things. So I can proclaim to be a friend of God. But does God call me? Does he really call me his friend? I pray that he calls me his friend. That's my desire. But does he really call me his friend? What do I need to do to ensure that God calls me his friend? James 2.23 James 2, 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. In spite of all the obstacles before him, Abraham believed God's promise. And God saw his faith. So do we have faith in God? And credited this faith as righteousness. Do you still have faith in God in the face of opposition? Do you still have faith, God, when things don't seem to be going the way you want them to go? Do you still have faith in God? Do we take God at his words or do we overprocess his words? We must get to a place where we learn to take God at his words. So I'm not saying stop singing these songs. I mean, we sing it. I'm still singing them. But now I'm just going to go a step further to pause to pause, to think, to reflect, and then to genuinely appreciate God. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah? So we're going to pause, we're going to think, and we're going to genuinely appreciate God. We won't do lip service again. The psalmist says, seven times a day I will praise thee because of your righteous judgment. I want us to, you know, I was, I, I was listening to a message and the man of God was saying, how can you praise God seven times a day? He said, you can praise him when you wake up in the morning. You can praise him when you're about to have your breakfast, if you eat breakfast. You can break, praise him at tea time, you know, that tea time between breakfast and lunch. And then you can praise him at lunch time. And then the second tea time of the day between lunch and dinner, you can praise him. And at dinner time, you can praise him. And when you're about to go to bed, you can praise him. What does that simply mean? It means make a habit of praising God. Because the more you do it, the more genuine you're going to become. Because it becomes not just something you do because we're in church and there's some song going on, but something that has become a lifestyle. So someone said, instead of um, thanksgiving, be thanks living. Yeah? Rather than thanksgiving, which is occasional, be thanks living. In other words, you make thanks, praise, worship, a lifestyle. Let's rise up to our feet. Praise God. Praise God. I want you to just lift up your voice and begin to exalt the name of the Lord. Remembering everything I have said, make sure it is genuine. Make sure it is not lip service. If it is only one word you can utter in appreciation to God, go ahead and offer him. Thank God. Say, Father, thank you, Lord. Remember, I said you can thank him in the morning. So some suggestions of how we can thank him. Thank him for victory over the battles of the night. Thank him for miracles of sleeping and waking up. That is something you can genuinely be thankful to God for. Thank him that while she was sleeping, while she was sleeping, he was watching over you. Thank him for his breath in your lungs. Thank him for a new lease of life. 
Thank you for his divine visitation. Some suggestions of the things we can use to thank God. But you know what God has done for you. Lift up your voice and thank him. Lift up your voice and praise him. Remember, we are not doing lip service. So let your heart and your mind be here. Be in what you are saying. Father, we thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. Thank you for guarding us throughout the perils of the night. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for your breath in our lungs. Thank you that whilst we were sleeping, you were watching over us. Thank you, Lord, for a new lease of life. Thank you for your divine visitation. Thank you for food on our table. Thank you for food in our store. Thank you for daily provision. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord, for appetite for food. Thank you that we can eat. Thank you that we can chew our food. Thank you we can swallow our food. Thank you we can digest our food. Thank you we can assimilate our food. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for all hurdles we overcome. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for lessons we learn, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for your divine presence. Thank you for open heaven. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we enter to your gates this day with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come into your courts with praise. We are thankful and we bless your holy name. Thank you for the gift of family. Thank you for your church. Thank you, Lord, for our nation. Thank you, Lord. 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 And say, Father, from now onwards, help me to give you genuine praise, oh God. Genuine praise, oh God. So that when I sing these songs, oh God, I can be genuine, oh God. I surrender all, oh God. I surrender all, oh God. And help me, oh God. Those things I have withheld from you, I release them. Help me, Lord, never to hold back, oh God. Help me never to turn back, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I give myself away, Lord. Use me, use me, use me. Every praise is indeed to you, God. It is not to man. Every praise is to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, you are the air I breathe. Father, the grace to be desperate for you. Father, God, release upon me. Help me, Lord. Help me to now, from now onwards, see you as the air I breathe, oh God. In the name of Jesus, help me to see you as the air I breathe. Help me to genuinely be your friend. In the name of Jesus, help me, O oh God, that my worship, my praise, my thanksgiving will be genuine. It won't be lip service. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lift up your two hands to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the word we have heard this morning. That if we're really to be true with ourselves, all of us are guilty of lip service. Because sometimes we do things... You know, it almost becomes second nature. We're just doing it. You know, we're not even, you know, we're not even thinking about what we're doing. We are sorry for any time we have paid lip service and we have not been genuine and we have been hypocritical. We have been acting. Have mercy upon us. From now onwards, we throw away all our acting garments. Father God, we throw away all our acting experience and we just want to come, you know, just as we are as little children before you, genuine, sincere, so that, Lord, every time we open our mouth and speak, it will be a reflection of what is in our heart, and it will be a reflection of our actions in the name of Jesus. Father, help us. We know it is difficult. There's so many distractions. Say, Father, help me to overcome distractions. Say, Lord, help me to overcome distractions. Help me, Lord, to overcome distractions. Help us, Lord to overcome distractions. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God.